In the language of the Kulin peoples, we say, Womanjeka, not simply welcome, but come with purpose. Welcome to everyone joining the online gathering for this third Sunday after Epiphany. A warm welcome to anyone who is here for the first time. Every year, the Uniting Church marks a day of mourning to reflect on the dispossession of Australia's First Peoples and the ongoing injustices faced by First Nations people in this land. For those of us who are Second Peoples, we lament that we are and remain complicit. The observance of a day of mourning was endorsed by the 15th Assembly in 2018, arising from a request of the Uniting Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress. As an expression of the Uniting Church's commitment to justice and truth-telling, we declared the Sunday before Australia Day as a day of mourning. In marking a day of mourning, we hear the call of Jesus to love one another. We live into our covenant relationship to stand together with and listen to the wisdom of First Nations people in their struggle for justice. We affirm the sovereignty of First Peoples and honour their culture and their connection to country. We reaffirm our understanding that First Peoples encountered the Creator God long before colonisation. We confess and seek forgiveness for the dispossession and violence against First Peoples. We lament our part and we recommit to justice and truth-telling. We say sorry and we pray for forgiveness, healing and hope. But today will not leave us with lament or paralyse us in shame. This is also a day for proclaiming, transforming grace and liberating hope for all people grounded in the sacred spirit made known to us in Jesus and the stories of his friends and followers and many wisdom spirit traditions. So as we gather to worship, we acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, first inhabitants of this nation from time beyond remembering. We acknowledge that through this land, God nurtured and sus sustained the First Peoples. At St Michael's, we acknowledge the Wurundjeri and Boon peoples of the Kulin Nation and honour them for their custodianship of the land on which we gather today. We acknowledge that the First Peoples are already encountered the Creator's Spirit before, their arri before the arrival of the colonists. The Spirit was already in this land, revealing God to the people through law, custom and ceremony. We acknowledge that the same love and grace that was revealed in Jesus sustained the First Peoples and gave them particular insights into God's ways. And so we give thanks for the reconciling purposes of God found in the good news for all people. Wherever you are, on your spiritual journey, wherever you have come from, wherever you're going to, whatever you believe, whatever you do not believe, you are welcome. Now, this is Sunday, the third Sunday after Epiphany. A warm welcome to you and for anyone who's here for the first time. Each Sunday in church, we remember people participating in worship at St Michael's by watching the video, people who are pre-COVID members of St Michael's and people who have joined us during the pandemic, seeking a place where Christian faith is explored in an open and progressive way and expressed in, an, in a spirituality that lifts up our hearts and nourishes our spirits. Over the last couple of Sundays, we've had fewer people attending the services in person, undoubtedly because of the large number of COVID cases in Melbourne. So today, I recognise people who would be with us in person if it was safe for them to do so. 
We understand the choices you are making. We miss you and look forward to being together when it is safe to do so again. Our gospel reading today, we hear the story of Jesus going to the synagogue and reading from the prophet Isaiah. And Jesus read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he read this in his own town of Nazareth. What a return. The gathering words. Our, our land is alive with the glory of God. Desert sands hum and gum trees dance. Brown grasses sing and mountains breathe their stillness. All created things add their rhythms of delight and even stones wrap out their praise. Let our voices mingle with those of the earth. May our hearts join the beat of her joy. For divine presence is with us. The source of all being surrounds and upholds us. Jesus walks beside and calls us to follow the way of justice and peace. The spirit moves within and between us. Blessed be God, our wonder and delight. Our first hymn for today is We Are Your People. Let us bring before God our prayers of awareness. Let us pray. Abba Father, Papa God, source of all life, answers our call as a mother responds to the cry of a child in the night. Jesus Christ, friend and liberator, stands beside us as bearer of our humanity and sharer of God's grace. The creator spirit, giver of new life, calls us to be a people of hope and faith. In the many names of the sacred, we pray. Amen. Okay, this is some understanding and background for the reason why we call this day a day of mourning. Following a decision of the 2018 Assembly, 
the Uniting Church invites people to mark a day of mourning on the Sunday before Australia Day, acknowledging and reflecting upon the effect of the invasion and colonisation of Australia's First Peoples. Many, many elements of today's liturgy are based on resources prepared by the Uniting Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress. The roots of a day of mourning are much older than the 2018 Assembly. On January 26, 1938, while many Australians celebrated the 150th anniversary of the landing of the First Fleet, a group of Aboriginal men and women gathered at Australia's Hall in Sydney. They had come together to continue a struggle that had begun 150 years previously. They met to move the following resolution. We, representing the Aborigines of Australia, assembled in conference on the 150th anniversary of the white man's seizure of our country, hereby make protest against the callous treatment of our people by the white men during the past 150 years. And we appeal to the Australian nation of today to make new laws for the education and care of Aborigines. We ask for a new policy which will raise our people to full citizen status and equality within the community. The first day of mourning was a culmination of years of struggle. It became the inspiration for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander activism throughout the remainder of the 20th century and a driving force calling for a constitutional referendum that took place in 1967. The movement persuaded many religious denominations to declare the Sunday before Australia Day as Aboriginal Sunday, to serve as a reminder of the unjust treatment of Indigenous people. The first of these took place in 1940 and continued until 1955, when it was incorporated into NAIDOC Week. The Uniting Church, in endorsing the Uluru Statement from the heart, believes the day of mourning as an important way we engage in truth-telling, as we seek to be a community of love and hope for, reconcili for reconciliation between all peoples and the renewal of the whole creation. I'm going to move into prayer statement, which is called Truth Telling and an Invitation. To the shores upon they came, with anchors this nation's shame, loving and living in harmony with the land, caring for Mother Earth, Mother Earth caring for and with ceremony, storylines, song lines, customs, traditions, tribes, nations and clans, what now sits within the colonizer's hands, what intergenerational mourning and healing is about to unfold. Layers of mourning unfold in the stories not told. To know mourning is to know grief and loss. Removal of lands, removal of children and injustice of the declaration of terra nullis. To know the dispossession, the invasion, the colonial rule, the colonial persuasion. To dig deep into the layers of mourning. Layers of mourning unfold of the stories not told. The wailing of a mother as a child is taken away. The relocation to country far away. The connections lost. The connections severed. The generations of injustice weathered. Layers of mourning unfold in the stories not told. In a nation now called Australia, where is truth-telling not always told? 
To know mourning is to truly know injustice, a struggle for justice. We seek guidance from ancient wisdom of past and present to hold this mourning in our hearts and minds, to honour, to pay respect, to know, to appreciate and to act on injustice. Layers of mourning unfold in the stories not told. A resilient people, a mob of survivors against the forces set upon, that's to celebrate, that's wisdom to walk with, and so we weep, and so we survive, and so we ensure our culture will thrive. Layers of mourning unfold in the stories not told. Today we mourn, but we together must action much more, interwoven unlearning, interwoven truth-telling, interwoven restoring of justice, our inherent call from the Creator to justice. It's called for us all, a call to an ongoing woven mat of justice, truth-telling and covenanting. Layers of mourning unfold in the stories not told. Creator Spirit, praise be to you for your guidance. Praise be to you for the healing of grief and loss. May we each day embrace the truth-telling of the lands we walk on, the lands invaded, and together weave a basket of shared healing, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, not just for yesterday, but in the now and the forever time. Let us bring before God our lament and our confession. Let us pray. In response to the lament of the first peoples, as second peoples of this land, we pray in lament and confession. We lament the injustice and abuse that has so often marked the treatment of the First Peoples of this land. We lament the way in which their land was taken from them and their language, culture, law and spirituality was despised and suppressed. We acknowledge and lament the way in which the Christian Church has so often not only complicit in its process but actively involved in it. We lament that in our time, the injustice and abuse has continued. We have been indifferent. Gracious God, hear our confession. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved First Peoples and other neighbours as ourselves. God of mercy, forgive us for our failures, past and present, and give us the grace today to make a fresh start. May your spirit transform our minds and hearts so that we may love as you have loved us, that we may boldly speak your truth and courageously do your will. May the assurance of reconciliation with the sacred, with the first peoples and with the lands and waters of the earth empower us to risk our comfort and privilege for the sake of healing. Amen. And the declaration of forgiveness. This is the best of all. When we are empty, God fills us up. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. When we confess our sin, God forgives us. In Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You refill the cup of life, O God. In Christ we find refuge, strength and hope. Amen. And I know I'm here and you're in your homes or somewhere else, but I'd like to share a sign of peace. And if you are with somebody, share the sign of peace with them. May we embody peace in our lives, 
and create peace with others who share this beloved country with us. May the peace and justice of divine presence be with you and also with you. Amen. Hebrews Bible, Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. For the vision of the early Christian communities, we give thanks. Listen for the words of faith in the Gospel of Luke 4, 14 to 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Most High has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. For the word that was in the beginning, for the word that invites and inspires, for the word embodied in us, we give thanks.
The theme for today's reflection is let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. Recently, I've had reason to articulate my educational theory. As some of you might know, I'm the manager of the spiritual care department at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. I'm also the clinical pastoral educator and centre director. Educating people to be spiritual carers in a clinical environment. So that's why I do have an educational model or theory. And the model that I draw heavily on is experiential learning theory. This was proposed by David Kolb, who proposed that experiential learning theory, and he gave it six propositions. So the first proposition is learning is a process, not an outcome. All learning is relearning. His third proposition is learning requires resolution of conflicts between dialectically opposed modes of adaptation to the world. His fourth one is learning is a holistic process of adaptation to the world. Learning results from synergetic transactions between the person and the environment. And the last one is learning is a process of creating knowledge. And as you may have picked up, I stumbled over the word adaptation. Maybe it's still a conflict for me that I still have to um, resolve. But anyway, I'll move on. The third of the six experiential learning theory propositions states that learning requires the resolution of conflicts between dialectically opposed modes of adaptation to the world. Conflict, differences and disagreement are what drive the learning process. In the process of learning, one is called upon to move back and forth between opposing modes of reflecting and action and feeling and thinking. We are in a constant state of learning and relearning. Or are we? Routine, while comfortable, is exactly that. It is comfortable, for it does not require thought. Routine does not activate neuron development. Routine and repetition dulls the brain and lulls the brain to sleep. We seek novelty and require novelty for growth and development. Whereas conflict which is not externalised, which is acknowledged as difficulty with adapting to what is occurring, either internally or externally, can lead to learning. For it is when we seek a resolution to that which is causing distress, it is that which is learning. When we recognise the desire to adapt and act on what we desire transforms our environment. The conflict is resolved and we have learned and been energised by the process. For we have experienced growth and development. Therefore, conflict is not to be avoided. It is to be embraced. The conflict I'm advocating is that sense of internal discomfort, that squirmy feeling that something is not quite right. Recognising that sense of internal disquiet gives the opportunity to explore and consequently learn. Now, the above process is not age dependent. We can do that at any age. But we more, we more often do it later in life. I'm going to revisit Psalm 19, in particular verses 1 through 4. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The author, in a very poetic way, is describing how the sky our natural environment within which we are constantly moving, declares God's glory. J. 
just as an aside, where does the sky start? Answer, when the earth ends. There are no words, no speech, no voice is heard, yet God's glory is known. This links well with the gospel reading, for in using someone else's words, Jesus is able to declare and describe his ministry. The bringer of good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. A bold and dangerous ministry. A bold and dangerous life's work. A sense of conflict that is both internal and external. Today is a day of mourning. We are specifically mourning the treatment of First Nations people. Returning to today's greeting, we are remembering the tragic history of our nation and the violent dispossession of her First Peoples. We say sorry and we pray for forgiveness healing and hope. We also come together and give thanks to God for the grace which enables us to face ourselves and the wrongs in our country and seek healing and be given the courage to repent and seek to mend our wrongs. As the main focus of this morning's is the disposition of and the violence against First Peoples. I recognise within myself discomfort, an agitation that invites me to look at my behaviour and inaction. It is this internal conflict that prompts me to action. The conflict and the theme of today prompts us to explore other times we have not been generous to others, or even generous to ourselves. To celebrate identity is sometimes to actually clearly identify times of inaction that caused harm to others and to ourselves. When we belittle, judge, demean another, we are also doing it to ourselves. And then there are times that we are mean to ourselves. 80% of our time in self-talk is negative. The other day, I was given a stone to carry with me. The purpose of the stone was to pull me up when I had a negative thought about another to change that thought to one of non-judgment, of acceptance, of grace. As I reflect on this, I am saddened that I need a stone to help me to be non-judgmental, to be gracious, to be accepting. When I closely reflect on my thoughts, I notice that when I do notice a difference, I'm less accepting. So if I notice a difference in another, I'm less accepting of them as a person. It is something I am very ashamed of. As I examine the conflict, I also notice that I have difficulty in accepting my own difference. For a long time, I wished that I could tan like my friends who didn't have red hair. Anyway, acceptance is the key, the key to change the key to being non-judgmental, the key to living an imperfect life while travelling travelling towards an improved life, a life of learning, a life of accepting conflict and engaging with it in such a way that the conflict is resolved and the opposed forces that created the conflict are no longer conflicting. You might see today's photo. It is a photo that I took on the way home from work just before Christmas, and it was at about 8 p.m. So as you can see, the light is still good. When I saw the kangaroo, I thought it was a trick of light, but then I had a closer look and thought 
that it might be an albino roux. So I did a U-turn and took the resulting photo. On closer inspection, it's probably not an albino roux, but a whitish grey, <laughs> if there is such a thing. What is notable about this photo, other than the colour of the kangaroo, is the composition of the picture. We have the light grey roux off by itself, looking away, and the other three roux in the, in the close group, looking towards me. The photo talks of me and talks to me of difference and separation. Other elements of the photo are the different greens and the striking gold. You might also notice the presence of a bench to sit and watch, to take a moment and enjoy the picture. Today, we are invited to be bold, to address the conflict that exists between and within us, to call out injustice, to name honour, to recognise grace and respect, to acknowledge love, to pray with hope. Jesus came to bring good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. These are elements to meditate on. Meditation need not just be focusing on the breath. It can be a way of opening the mind to possibility, opening the heart to love. It can be prayer. Meditation is able to be the tool to help identify and explore the internal conflicts. As mentioned earlier, we seek novelty and require novelty for growth and development. The full quote from Psalm 19 is, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So it is a combination of both words and meditation, words and action. Meditation is more than thought. It is a stillness that fosters a deep presence. Meditation offers opportunity to connect with the soul and to nourish the soul. Meditation also helps still the heart and still the mind, allowing for the resolution of internal conflicts and space to address those conflicts. The action of using meditation to resolve or to be, or to be a pathway that resolves conflicts is what is acceptable. Heartfelt meditation expands the heart, nourishes and expands the soul, and that is very acceptable. So as we reflect upon today and go forward into the day and week, may we be so moved to act with creative and thoughtful purpose that let the meditations of our hearts be acceptable. Amen. Now, our next hymn is Follow the Song Lines. Dance that day. 
Before God in thanksgiving and solidarity our prayers for the people. Our prayers of thanksgiving and solidarity for compassion, justice and peace. Give us the courage to accept the realities of our history so that we may build a better future for our nation. Teach us to respect all cultures. Teach us to care for our land and waters. Help us to to share justly the resources of this land. Help us to bring about spiritual and social change to improve the quality of life of all peoples in our communities, especially the disadvantaged. Help all young people to find true dignity and self-esteem by your spirit. May your power and love be the foundations on which we walk together as first and second peoples and build our families, our communities, and our nation through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this moment of silence, I invite you to name places and people whose needs we know as we listen to the Spirit calling us to respond with courage and compassion. We journey in faith into the unknown in the company of the God made known in Jesus. May our prayers move us to do the work of justice and love. We pray together. In your many names we pray. Amen. Now move on to the offering. We acknowledge with thanks the gifts given by people who participate in our services online supporting the community and outreach of St Michael's. If you'd like to know more about giving online, you can find information on the St Michael's website. The spirit is on the move, renewing and restoring, overcoming division and exclusion. May the gifts we offer be part of that movement. 
Our next hymn is called As Partners in Christ's Service. And the sending out. Go from here to live out the covenant between the first and second peoples of our church and our land. Confront and challenge injustice wherever you see it. Act justly and insist that others do the same. Rejoice in the richness of our diverse cultures and learn from them. 
celebrate and demonstrate the unity we share in our common humanity, collaborating with the Spirit to bring about the reconciliation for all creation and the blessing. Blessing for this day and for the week ahead. May the sacred creator of this great Southland give us strength. May the memory of Jesus who calls us to be a just nation give us courage. And may the spirit of peace who shares the journey with us be our inspiration. Amen. Thank you.